Welcome to the Embodied Woman Podcast. We are so excited because today, Amber and I are have some questions. We have some questions. <laughs> I'm just here. I told you earlier, I said, I'm here for the miracle and I'm here as a student. I'm like, okay, I'm just showing up. Teach, teach me, teach me, <laughs> teach me your magical, <laughs> your magical Kundalini activated money abundance. Seriously, yeah. Uh, mushroom magic ways. I mean, so Stephanie Sage, I, I've been aware of her for I want to say like seven years, maybe maybe longer, on the Facebook community. She, especially when I started doing Akashic Record readings, she was very prevalent in my awareness on social media and she has this huge group um uh, that she facilitates and she's been in the background for years and then she you know came back up in my awareness when we were doing this podcast and so let me read her bio stephanie sage and that's a new I feel like I'm screaming. Stephanie Sage. That's a, <laughs> that's a new name for her. Okay, good. I saw that. Yeah. Um, she's a spiritual mentor, an activator for soul led leaders, and the mm. creator of Spiritual Boss Babe, one of the largest online communities and podcasts serving tens of thousands of spiritual entrepreneurial women around the world. Stephanie works with spiritual coaches, mystics, channelers, and healers, supporting them with fully embodying their gifts and innate magnetism and mm. quantum leaping their impact, income, and fulfillment. I mean, this is, she's magic, I said to Amber. Oh, I'm so ready for this. I'm so ready for this magic. And I'm, this is my intention. By the end of this episode, I would have liked to experience a quantum leap. <laughs> That's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm just putting out there. Okay? I mean, I'm why not? Why not? Why not? Like if we can line up with her magic, yes, then please. I don't see why not. Also, Amber and I, as we know from our human design charts, when we're together, there's a magic there too. We've got what's called four sparks. Mm -hmm. electro electromagnetic channels between us and then we also complete each other's body graph with the way that we're filled in in all of our energy centers so like our guests get to experience that energy of like absolute complete you know energetic holding which everyone has wow. said yeah. that they love so much so i love providing that for people and you know creating this like loving space for them what else what else will we want to ask oh here she is here. Yeah. i'm ready for it. i'm ready for it i want to play that song taylor swift are you ready for it <laughs> i feel like that's very stephanie I know. I feel like she's like this cosmic queen. Yeah. <clears throat> Isn't that like the word that that's the word that comes to my mind when I like was looking at her pictures and listening to her. I was like, she's like a cosmic queen. You're, inspi <laughs> you're inspiring me. <laughs> like I'm thirsty too. Drink your water. So Stephanie, while you're popping on, I read your bio and we're just talking about all the things we're excited to ask you about. We know that you're into embodiment. That's your thing. So no wonder you're here. Yay! Sorry. Hey. Uh, hi, guys. Hi. I love the little uh, behind the scenes talk I just heard. Oh, good. <laughs> I, Even uh, the purple. I was saying that like you are like a cosmic queen. Those are the words that came to me when I was learning more about you. And then you pop on with this purple color. And I feel like <laughs> it's just amplifying the cosmic queen Thank you. energy that I was feeling before we even met you. That sounds accurate. That sounds accurate. I'm well, just trying to, uh, I might have to hold this little microphone because I'm trying to record on my phone too. Okay. For the first time, like for my computer and my phone. Okay. Great. Okay. And Whatever you, uh, you sound this, perfect This little to me. clip is like not clipping. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll work with it. We'll work so with it. I'm going to hold my little baby mic just so my phone could pick it up. <laughs> Perfect. But I also awesome. have my podcast mic. Does my audio sound okay? Yeah, sounds, sounds good. good. 
Okay. I just literally just created this um, new podcast studio. I love it. And um, this is like the first time I'm oh, using nice. it. And actually, it's also the first time that I'm being introduced as Stephanie Sage. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I want to know more about that. I want to know more uh, about I that. I would love to talk more about that. Yeah, sure. Let's go for it. Tell us. Dive, let's dive in. We read your bio. So we have a little bit of an idea of who you are and, and you know, there's so much that we want to know. So let's start there. With my name? Yeah, why not? Let's, let's, let's yeah. hear what, yeah. what is, what's that all about? So I recently changed my name to Stephanie Sage. My real name is Stephanie Bellinger. I just kind of wanted an addition. It's been something that I've been thinking about for years, actually. Um, after a really powerful DMT ceremony in Guatemala, I felt very different. And it just felt like it was time to step into a next evolution of who I am, of what I'm doing. It feels more elevated and uh, expansive to me. Uh, my brand has been Spiritual Boss Babe for the last seven years. And I'm going through a lot of shifts and evolution within that as well. And so uh, my name change really just came with my Instagram handle change, which was my Instagram handle was the Spiritual Boss Babe. And I was like, I, I want to change my Instagram handle to feel more me at this stage in my life and on my journey. And I was like, oh, but I want to just be called my name. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, well, now's the time to do the name shift, I guess. And that's kind of how it happened. And, Beautiful. It, and I love the meaning of sage and, you know, I channel my own wisdom for myself and love to share my wisdom and experiences with other people. And yeah, it just feels right. <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, I love the word Sage too, because it's the beginning of the name of my business is Sage and Blush Wellness. Oh, nice. I, lo I love that it has a couple meanings. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. I love it. Stephanie Sage's. It's absolutely oh, beautiful. It, yeah. It sounds Thank like you. that's how it's always meant, meant to, to be. be. Yeah. Right. It just feels, yeah. it feels, it feels me. And also it's funny because right before this name shift and this whole thing, I know this is random, but it's a big deal to me. I literally discovered I have wavy hair for the first time in my freaking life. What? I'm 37. <laughs> I just discovered I have wavy hair like maybe four months ago. And I've been rocking this new found hairstyle that feels like, it feels like, imagine waking up with a different color eyes. <laughs> That's how this felt like for me. It's like, a, just, like, it's like a mermaid. Like it's gorgeous. Did you just used to blow dry it out so you never really saw yeah, how it dried I would, naturally? I would, I would either blow dry it or I would just, I it, I noticed it had a wave, a little bit of a wave, but I never, I just never like accepted that it was wavy. So I would straighten it or I would mm -hmm. curl it. And if I didn't do that, I would think it was messy, but I really just didn't know that it was wavy and I didn't know how to style it for the wave. So I'm embracing my lioness mane now, shifted my name. Yes. Into, yeah. Lots of rebirth. Yes. I love it. I love it's it. It's never ending, right? It's never ending this journey that we're on. It's like, just when you think you're like, hey, I got things figured out. It's like this whole new situation happens, right? Totally. This whole new situation. Well, let's, okay. I love that. And I love hearing that, but let's, let's go back a little bit to kind of, you know, figure out how, how you even ended up on this journey. Was there, was there like a specific moment that happened in your life where you were never the same after, uh, that was the catalyst to. There was a lot remembering. of remembering. There was a lot of moments like that. I'm not really sure exactly where to bring you on the journey. Um, but anywhere I, that you want, I guess to the start really of my path. Yeah. Um, I started my spiritual journey when I was a teenager. I was around 14 when I started meditating. I got my first deck of Oracle cards and I started collecting a whole library of books on energy, chakras, spirit guides, past lives, uh, psychic abilities. I wanted to know everything. Mm -hmm. And I was brought up really religious. Well, my mom, my mom was Catholic. My dad was kind of more open-minded at that time. And so, uh, I was, I was brought up in a, uh, with the, I guess my mom was just not into a lot of what I was exploring, but it just felt 
right for me. It felt really expansive. And I was also in a very abusive relationship at that time from when I was 14 to 20. Mm -hmm. And so the spiritual path and like meditating and all of that really helped me get through that challenging time. And it helped me take charge of my health and my body and my fitness. And I lost 60 pounds and eventually wow. left that relationship. And wow. I developed different practices during that time that I still do, or they have evolved a little bit to tune into myself and really connect to my, the larger aspect of myself outside of my human self you know, meditation rituals, like movement, um, and just different things to empower myself from the inside out. And that's basically when I completely changed my life and decided to make the rest of my life the best of my life. I remember making a promise to God that, you know, when I get out of that relationship, I basically said, when I get out of this hell that I'm in, I promise to use my voice to support others in some way and to really just live my best life and follow all of my dreams. And mm. that's kind of where my motivation comes from. That's beautiful. And, and you, you did, you did that. I mean, you came out of that and then you just were on that path from that moment on. That's kind that's of, amazing. I mean, there was like bumps and ups and downs. So after that um, relationship, I, I didn't know that I had a lot of healing to do. So at that time I was only 20 when I left. And to me, I was just like freedom at last. I'm free. Like I could do whatever I want. So I ended up, cause I felt like a prisoner cause you know, he controlled everything. And it was very scary because I literally feared not only for my own life, but for my family, he would like threaten my family and stuff mm. like that. And, you know, he was pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. So I, um, but I didn't realize I had a lot of healing to do. I just was like, I'm free. I moved to New York. I uh, got into the club scene, the party scene. I did a, a lot of substances and <laughs> um, just wanted to just be free and connect and have fun. And um, I, I kind of developed this, uh, I guess you could say alter ego. I used to call her gangster Steph. And she was the one who takes no shit. Like no one's going to fuck with her ever again. And um Later down the line in around, I don't know, 2013, I think I started getting into EMDR therapy and uh, hypnosis and EFT because I learned from an event that I went to that um, I learned about trauma and how it can get stored in different ways and affect us in a multitude of ways if it's not handled or processed or whatever. And so that's when I started going down that path. And then I got into psychedelics and working with plant medicine in about 2015, uh, which further, you know, catapulted my evolution and kind of made everything made, made sense from in the past before that. And I was able to do a lot more healing very quickly, um, integrate some inner child stuff. And that's when that's when things really escalated as far as my path of like spiritual growth and healing and transformation and expansion. Mm. And you were able to start to bring other people along on your journey and help them and activate them and all of that. We want to just, first of all, acknowledge what a perfect life you've had because uh -huh. all I of that, perfect, but <laughs> like all of that, is is helping you to help the planet right totally. like all of that has helped you to help thousands if not millions of women people and so thank you mm -hmm. for going through your process your what i call human revolution mm. you know for the betterment of everyone and um i'm so curious about your journey with embodiment practices you said that they started as something that you still use now to this day. So if we could get a little bit more into what you recommend or just what you love for yourself as embodiment practices. And then like, what does the embodied woman mean to you? Yeah. Oh, I love that. And I love the name of your podcast. <laughs> totally. Thank you. Um, so I have, 
I started, um, with working out, like I'm very big on working out, moving my body. I work out all the time. <laughs> I did not used to, I hated the idea of working out. I thought it was just sounded like the worst thing ever. <laughs> so that's where I started was movement, um, and meditation. Those were like the two main things, movement, meditation, and that changed my life. I have since like expanded on the things that I do and I developed what I like to call the empowered um, method, which mm. is um, in a, the M, like M, the letter M dash powered because everything starts with an M. So it's movement, music, mantras, mirror work, and sometimes microdosing. Mm. And so I like to combine these things and I'm a really big uh advocate, I guess you could say about mirror work. I think it's really powerful and very underrated. And sometimes people feel very weird when they do it, but it's one of the best ways to connect to yourself. So I like to combine um, mirror work, movement, music, and mantras in this way. And I'll share a little bit of why, if that's cool with you guys. Great. Uh, yeah, we love it. So music is basically like an anchor. I'm sure you all, anyone listening to, you can think of a song that when you hear it, it reminds you of, you know, that time in high school or it reminds you of like the best time of your life, or it reminds you of the saddest time. And it, 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 it brings up emotions and feelings. And so when we can use music, like music that really makes us feel really good and connected to ourselves or whatever, whatever you're wanting to feel really, um, it can support you in shifting your state. So that's why music is a thing. Movement, obviously, because we move energy when we move our bodies. So, you know, putting an empowering song on while you're moving your body and just letting yourself flow with whatever you want to move like, or maybe you're going through it and you really just, you're moving in a different way that, you know, your body wants to move. Um, mantras, I say mantras, and when I say this, I mean like powerful statements, not just affirmations, but like like power statements that is something that you need to hear today or something that you need to remind yourself of when you forget or when you go into moments of, you know, slipping back or whatever. I believe in the power of our voice and our the vibration of our vocal cords when we speak words and I don't care what anybody says. Like I see people say sometimes, oh, affirmations or blah, blah, blah. And sure, like there needs to be more than affirmations, but I believe in powerful mantras and statements that you say to yourself. So that's the mantra part. Um, music movement mantras. Mirror work. Mirror. So the mirror is really powerful because it engages all of our senses, most of our senses, right? You're seeing yourself in an empowered state or moving in a certain way. You are... Um, hearing yourself, you're using your voice, you're engaging a lot of your senses and actually seeing yourself and um, able to connect with yourself. I think mirrors are like a portal to your next level reality. If you really want to practice embodying stuff, see yourself, do it, like see yourself in that empowered state, see yourself crying and still being there for yourself. Like mm. it's going to be a multidimensional practice too. There've been times where I've done mirror work where I would I would I I heard this story going on in my head that was not very nice and I decided to sit down in front of the mirror and like just say it like let it all out all the uncomfortable like hard like mean stuff and I just said it to myself in the mirror and it was almost like I said it to myself in the mirror but I also was the observer and like mm -hmm. the the you know I guess the parent part of me was letting the little girl say all the things. And then I responded as the parent me, like, hey, like, I, I hear you. It's going to be okay, whatever. And just, I know it might sound weird, but it was one of the most powerful things that I did. And then I just intuitively moved my body after that and do whatever. So that's a like a, an overview of that practice. I kind of get creative with it, but I like to tell people, if you want to try that, just put on one pump up song move your body the way you want in front of the mirror, say something really empowering to yourself that feels good and like go on with your bad self. <laughs> I mean, you're, this it is, makes perfect this sense is, to me. <laughs> this is Amber's whole, this is Amber's whole thing. Oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, I had a studio or, a, you know, a healing sanctuary that it was movement, meditation and mindfulness and I'm a dancer. And so I teach, 
you know, empowered dance. So I'm, I'm all, all about the music and the movement and the dancing and, you know, holding on. That's so, I love that. Um, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I, I want to go back because when you were talking about your relationship, you know, like at a young age, I find that so many of us women who come to remember that we're here to be healers and sage, you know, sage, like we have experienced abusive relationships in some capacity or relationships where we are not honoring ourselves fully. What mm -hmm. have you discovered about that? Like, what do you think that's about? Why do we find, why do so many of us mm -hmm. who are these powerful healers, powerful women, right? Um, that we have had that experience. And what did you discover about yourself? And, you know, you said that you, you really were able to make sense of some things. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to hear more about that. I can't really, I never actually thought about that, to be honest, about like why so many people, I guess I would say that in my experience, um, it showed me that, um, I had a really disempowering concept of myself before I entered that relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, I have an older brother that like picked on me a little bit when I was little and, you know, he was a little boy as well. And, you know, it, but I took a lot of things to heart and, um, just different little things. I think, I think maybe because we're extra sensitive, we yeah. take things to heart and, start to identify with those things. And when we identify with those things, we have a really disempowering concept of ourselves, and then end up being more susceptible to situations that are toxic. Mm -hmm. So th that's how I see it for my own self. And so, um, cause I've done a lot of work on the whole thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I basically realized that I had a really disempowering of the concept of myself and I just felt like I wasn't good enough. Something was uh, off with me. And so when the first charming person came through, which was that person, because they're very obviously manipulative and sneaky in the beginning, you don't know. I thought, oh my goodness, like, you know, someone finally is like super into me, blah, blah, blah. And um, then it quickly turned into the cycle of abuse, which, uh, um, if anyone has been in a situation like that, you may know of the cycle of abuse, which when I found out, out about that, that's actually what helped me wake up a little bit to what was actually going on. Mm -hmm. Um, and realizing that it was a cycle that I was mixed into and didn't really fully realize, or maybe I realized it, but it was really challenging to get out of that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I honestly feel like that was a catalyst of my awakening and I have done a lot of medicine journeys and stuff around the whole thing because this was like 20 something years ago at this point, 20, well, I guess I left 17 years ago now it is, but, um, I am very grateful for that experience at this point, because it was the catalyst of my awakening. Like, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily believe everybody needs to have an experience that is like hell or rock bottom or whatever in order to awaken. Um, however, that's likely, that's the case most of the time. Something is a catalyst to your awakening. And uh, so for me, that's what it was. And I learned how to love myself, actually. Like, he his reflection in my reality and that whole experience was really the way I see it was the reflection of my lack of self-love for myself at that time and showed me how to love myself. I showed myself how to love myself, of course, but having that experience and that mirror to push me to be like, man, I need to get out of this. And if I, I'm not going to be able to get out of this unless I empower myself from the inside out. And so how do I do that? Oh, okay. I'll start meditating or I'll ask God spirit to help me. Like I'll start exercising and taking care of my body. And that's kind of how that started. So I see experiences like that as an opportunity to 
like awaken and really know how to love yourself and set boundaries and all of that stuff. But because I've had other experiences, not, not anywhere near close like that at all, like not even remote, but um, that were just more lessons on boundaries and loving yourself. And I've probably learned the most through relationships, which I don't really talk about all the time. Um, but yeah, and I don't know if that really answered your question. Absolutely. I think that's really helpful. And I think it's really helpful for anyone who's listening, particularly women who have found themselves in a cycle to be able to recognize that and to just know, I think it's really important because people can look at someone like you and be like, oh my God, like she's this cosmic queen, right? She's got her shit together. She's doing all these crazy things. She's amazing. She's beautiful. She's this. I'm like, there's no, you know, I have these experiences. So I think it's really important for those of us who have had incredibly disempowering experiences, particularly in relationships to talk about it and to talk about how we worked our way out of it and what we did mm -hmm. to work our way out of it and what we continue to do to love ourselves on a daily basis and what that looks like and how that feels. Yeah. yeah it's so true. And it really, really does come, come back to self-love, like yeah. radically loving yourself because like everything is a reflection of the depth of love you have for yourself in my experience with a lot of things. And um, I even remember when I was younger, when I, before I even got into that uh, situation, when I was in like middle school, I was mute. I didn't talk to anybody. And I remember this one day, I, I still remember this. I, and I don't think I ever shared this, but I just, this memory popped up for me not that long ago where I was like in the school bathroom and I literally looked in the mirror and I asked God in the mirror, why did you make me so ugly? Hmm. And I, this little girl, like 10, you know, like maybe, and like, why did I think that about myself? Well, cause I, you know, other people said this or I was picked on or like something I took personal and like, I made that, like, I, I like took that on as an identity and felt really crappy about myself. I mean, more than that, but like, it really had to come down to like this radical choice of, um, like learning to understand and love myself. And the way to do that honestly is through meditation because you quiet your mind and the mind is literally the root of all suffering. <laughs> Amen. I know Amber was, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that vulnerable story. I know Amber was interested in your Kundalini activation experience. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was listening to your podcast interview with Beck and you, you started to touch upon that was before your, I your, went to do, to do like these classes. Yeah. I'd love to hear more about that. And uh, yeah, anything that you want to share about that? I think it's fascinating. Yeah. So I, I guess I'll start with like my channel opening because I think it was related. So three years ago, I, my channel opened, my light language opened and I had some interesting experiences uh, in medicine space where my my body would just was like involuntary moving and like my uh, channel was I was channeling and um, I was having a big somatic releases and stuff like that. And uh, later down the line, I came across a Kundalini activation process. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. It's a um, uh, basically an energy work modality, I guess you could say in simplest terms. Um, okay. And it, it supports the activation of your Kundalini in a safe way mm -hmm. that isn't very jarring and all of that. So I came across some videos around that and I thought to myself, wow, this looks really similar to what I experienced multiple times in um, like medicine space with my channel opening, I wonder if it's related because whenever I've had um, those experiences, the energy is always kind of coming from like my sacral and then it like comes up and my body's just moving. And so when I had that interview with um, Beck, she was sharing some about her experience and I was like, oh, maybe this is related. Shortly after that, I went to um, a couple Kundalini activation process classes here in Austin where they basically facilitate the energy transmission Mm -hmm. And it was really cool. It was really powerful. I feel like um, this is a something I'm still exploring, actually, 
and something I'm probably going to want to learn how to maybe even facilitate once I'm like, you know, I, I want to spend my time with like my own exploration with it. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say that uh, I felt really at peace and connected and um, it was right before my name change <laughs> and everything, literally like two weeks before. Wow. Amber and I are both Reiki practitioners. So there's that sort of you know, attunement process, if you will. Mm -hmm. I can relate in that sense. We both have had experiences with mushroom journeys in our past. And and then also um, I was born in a Kundalini yoga ashram. Oh, cool. So my, my parents were, my dad was a yoga teacher. And so I can, I can relate, but I don't know exactly. I think you have to probably be there. Yeah yeah to know exactly what that experience is it sounds very experiential oh it's it was very experiential like the the actual class um you could literally feel the energy coming in you know to, to, through your crown like you you could feel it like people who are very even skeptical um often have involuntary movement and you're just laying there and i moved a little bit the first time the second time i didn't not everybody does um and I was just, but I did have a very deep experience of like non-dual consciousness and like oneness and stuff like that. And I like, yeah, I'm excited to explore this even further with my own work and in medicine space too, even because I feel like it's a, it's a component to the evolution of what I'm doing. I feel strongly, especially, mm -hmm. um, getting more into like mystical teachings and stuff like that, that I would like to dive deeper into and perhaps possibly share more of. Are you a manifesting generator? I'm actually a generator. You're a generator. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it was Beck that was the Manny Gen, right? I think so. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm curious to hear about one of your most I mean, I'm sure there's so many to choose from, but one of your most magical mushroom experiences. <laughs> oh my God. There's literally so many to choose from. It's so funny. Like I have one friend, she always jokes with me that after every journey, I'm always like, no, this is, this is the most amazing journey ever. <laughs> and she's like, oh, you said that last time. And I'm like, no, I swear this one's small. And it's so funny because it's so freaking true. <laughs> I say that all the time. They just build um, off of each other. Each time it's like, you get more and more free. Yeah. And yeah. Well, I recently had one where I just shared on Instagram a little bit about some of that. Um, I recently had one where, well, there's two that I would like to share if that's cool. Like I'll try to keep it shorter. Yeah. Um, let me, let me go back. So a year and about a year and three months ago, I had one where I met God in the mirror and I'm actually writing a book. Um, and I basically, uh, I was down the whole time, like with my eyes closed, doing my work. I was doing a lot of healing and forgiveness work around that, uh, toxic relationship actually, cause it, it comes up sometimes. And there's layers. And in that particular journey, I was kind of just, just tying up some loose things, like trying to understand a little bit like of uh, just like why, why certain people are like that, I guess. I really was like curious, but without any judgment. And um, wait, so hold on. Wait. So Stephanie, why certain people are like, what say, what were you? Like, your, your, your boyfriend? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. I just, I guess I just, sometimes I get, it was supporting me and making a little bit of sense and kind of like just navigating a little, like yeah. a piece of it that I was getting at. Yeah. Um, and it was really peaceful, did another layer of forgiveness and stuff like that. And then I got up to go to the bathroom the first time the whole night and I looked into the mirror and the mirror, my face was completely different. I had a different face in front of my face. But it wasn't just one face. It was shifting, changing, multiple faces, multiple faces. Like some of the expressions were not very pretty. And I looked away and then I looked back and like with this sassy look, it was kind of funny. And I realized all of these faces are actually also me, mm -hmm. but it wasn't my face in the physical. And so 
I went back down, you know, left the bathroom. I was kind of processing. I was like, wow, that was freaking crazy. I couldn't even see my face. I went back to the bathroom a little while later and did it again and, and looked longer in the mirror. And as I was looking longer in the mirror, I was like leaning up close to it. I was like trying to see my actual face and I could not. I was even moving my mouth and couldn't like, it was different faces on my face and it, they just kept changing and changing. And eventually um, I realized that also that it was like representations of like ascended masters and it kind of slowed down and stopped around what looked like mother Mary. And I left the bathroom again and went to the couch and I was sharing it with, with one of my girlfriends. And I said, I just had a really, really life-changing ex experience in the bathroom. I think like, I just, like, I just met God in the mirror basically as me because I'm everything. And I already knew, like, I already believe that we are all God. God is everything. Like that's my, you know, that's what I've learned through all of my experiences, but it was way different seeing it in the mirror from a embodied place mm -hmm. where I was literally with my own physical eyes seeing. And so like being shown, Hey, look, you are all of this. You're all of this. Mm -hmm. And I, as I was sharing it with my friend, I was overcome with extreme existential bliss to the, to the capacity that I did not even know was humanly possible. And I still don't know, like how to even, it was the most, like I just said, like it, you indescribable. And my whole body was flooded with this feelings of bliss and love and all I got all these downloads around like why would you even worry about mindless stupid things like that's not even you the only mm -hmm. truth is love and gratitude and being present to experience that and then I like got all these downloads of understanding Jesus's teachings and all kinds of stuff and then my channel opened and light language came through and it was such a profound experience um to the point where I literally need to write a book. It's going to be written through me and um really excited about it. And I feel like the second aspect of the book is coming to me now through this last journey that I had recently where I, where Jesus came to me mm -hmm. and I uh, saw his face, like, and I was shown visions of his whole life, basically different, like different, flashes of his life like I was like actually there and I was like maybe it was I there or something <laughs> um, I don't know. but I was shown flashes of his life and like him teaching his teachings and and then all of a sudden he's the, the the phrase forgive them for they know not what they do came through and I was able to do another layer of forgiveness on I was able to forgive everybody mm -hmm. in this past journey through through uh, Jesus through saying like forgive them they know not what they do and understanding that what that means is that they're unconscious. They are not connected to love. So they they don't actually know what they're doing because they're not conscious. Mm -hmm. If you're conscious, you're aware and awareness is loving. Awareness is what we are. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to like really let that sink in and uh, had a lot of lessons around that and just got all these downloads to bring more Jesus energy into my work and my life. And, um, in a, in a non-religious way, uh, that's not my vibe. Um, I'm really interested in getting more into his true teachings, the mysticism and bringing, bringing that more into like how I guide people on their journey to remembering who they are and stepping into their gifts and opening their channel and all the things. So those are my two my top two right now that that come to me. I feel That's so incredible. expanded. I feel so expanded. Like, do you feel like you just went on that journey with her? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, that that part when you were talking about like the 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 bliss, I was like, I'd like to be there. I'd like to be there right now. But um, my question is too, because you know, I, I've had some journeys, and um, I'd love for for people that are listening who might not have a frame of reference for that, like. How do you find that it is helpful in your everyday life? Like, I mean, mm. sure, in the journey, I love the bliss. I love the, you know, but like, and I, I know for my own self, like the integration process and how certain things have been able to help guide the work that I'm doing. But I think 
I'd love to hear for, from you, like, how do you find what, what you receive in your journey, um, how you integrate it and carry it in your day-to-day -day life and how it benefits the women that you're serving? Yeah. I love that you asked that question because that's the most important part that a lot of people skip. And right. I think that's why I, I don't talk about the journeys so much, or I, I have talked about psychedelic experiences and the power of plant medicine in the past. And, you know, I, it's known, but I don't hyper-focus on it because I feel that a lot of people um, skip the integration process. And that's really the most important part. And so for me, um, well, I guess for anyone who's new to this whole thing. Um, I know it can sound like a lot <laughs> and it's not, it, it, maybe it's not for everybody, but uh, plant medicine and psychedelics like mushrooms or ayahuasca can be really, really powerful tools of transformation, healing and expansion that you can get a lot of work done in very little time. And it's also important to have someone that is holding safe space and you have an integration support and all of that. However, if you're starting out on your own, you could do something like microdosing, which is basically like, like taking a supplement where you don't even feel anything. It's subperceptual and it's working on things in the background, supporting you with having like a more open heart, um, just thinking from a more elevated space and lots of other things. Um, but if, to answer your question, as far as integration, um, for me, it's looked like a lot of things. Uh, it really depends on what comes through in the journey. Um, sometimes it could be like, oh, I need to have that conversation with mm. my mom or, oh, I need to, uh, I really need to, to let go of that habit and, you know, do something different or, um, or it could be like just different practices, like, um, developing a new mirror practice. After one journey, I started developing a more practice of opening my hips because I realized during mushrooms, a lot of energy was wanting to move and it was coming from my hips. And so I had this thing of, oh, I, I should do more like hip opening exercises because a lot of trauma is stored there. So I started doing like hip mobile, hip mode the hip mobility stuff and different things like that. Um, or it could look like, you know, um, when I'm having a mini breakdown or something, calling someone who I know has the capacity to hold space for me to work through that. So it could look a lot of different ways. It just comes down to um, like actually taking the time to make the changes and be honest with yourself because uh, sometimes after you have a big expansion, you can have a big contraction. Mm. And that was really a big thing for me when I did 5-MeO DMT back in Guatemala, like four years ago, which is known as the God molecule. And basically you become like everything and nothing and you're born again and you have this big experience. It's a big experience. And it's honestly, it's, it was, that was pretty powerful too. And it's not for everyone either, but I had such a big expansion that I had a huge contraction after that. I had went through a horrible breakup. I went from this blissful, you know, tapped in, oh my gosh, that's when I was going to change my name and change my brand. And then I went through this whole dark night of the soul, felt like depressed for months. And it was very challenging. Um, but what I got from that experience was that um, sometimes when we have really expansive experiences, it can drudge things up that need to go mm. um, or that are ready to be processed that maybe you couldn't process in the past because you didn't have the tools or the support, but now you do and it might not be easy. So it's just really practicing to move through everything with grace and love and have support and like really be honest with yourself of like what needs to shift or change when you're done or when you're out of that experience. I hope that was helpful. Thank Well, thank you so much for sharing that because it's incredibly helpful. And also just like personally, um, I, I really appreciate hearing from other women who are on this journey, who you said that you were like tapped in, blissed out, things were like, you were on that path, right? And then what felt like maybe regression or stagnancy or- oh, It felt like I went backwards right. times a hundred. Yeah, exactly. And I know that. And so it's just, you know, I think that it's so helpful- People have this, I think, a misconception that, 
you know, you reach this place and then it's like, you're just, it's just smooth sailing from there. Yeah. So it's helpful to hear from you that that was actually a necessary uh, experience because your soul was ready to let go of, of more shit for lack of a better word. Right. And then, you know, it was, it was some deep, dark, Yeah, it was, it was some like that relationship actually drudged up stuff from the abusive relationship that never got to be fully um, worked through, I guess you could say. Uh, I did feel in in some ways that it freaking re-traumatized me even, you know, but I have luckily the support The I've done enough work on myself, work through things, but it was not easy. And that was like four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. There's always, I I literally feel like I'm, I'm in my like comeback season now. (laughs) No, I've had a lot of amazing experiences since then. It wasn't like that long, but yeah, no, it's just, it's helpful. I think it's helpful. And it's just validating for, for anyone who's on this path, you know, to know that there are going to be phases of the, of the journey that feel really smooth and really blissful and really like on point. And then other phases of the journey where it might feel like you're regressing, but it's really just another layer. Um, yeah, yeah it's actually, the spiral, like, right? So mm-hmm. like coming back around. Yeah, I think I've learned my greatest lessons through those times of it not being very fun or easy. And I think what I've learned is that the more we try to control things or the more we think that it should be different, like yeah. that's when we create more suffering. Yeah. So if you can just like, yeah, accept like what is not in a way where you're like settling, but like just being like, okay, this is what's happening right now. It's not very easy, but da 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 da, and kind of just like let go. It's surrender essentially a bit more. That's really like the main thing that I learned is I I was judging myself so much mm. of like how could this be happening after all the things that I've done? How did I get here? Questioning my work, wanting things to like, it just, it just compounded everything. And so, yeah, I've learned to um, have more grace and compassion for my human self, for the things that she goes through that aren't very easy. And um, yeah, that's the, yeah. Stephanie, I'm, currently in the process of starting to decondition myself and unravel from my value being connected to my productivity. And Mm. I think that it's interesting to talk about money before we close. Mm. Could you touch upon those points for us? What specifically? Well, just what's your journey with productivity, your inherent value, money, Uh I think this has been a really, really huge lesson for me over the last couple of years. I mean, I had experiences where I literally felt like I was starting over. That's what my mind was feeling like. And um, I got into human design a couple of years ago. And once I started getting into that and learning about my design and like, you know, how my energy is best used, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. I started letting go of things that weren't feeling great. And with that process did come kind of like a bit of a rebuilding and kind of like reassessing because the things, the way that I used to do things, it does, it just doesn't align with who I am now and, you know, all this stuff. So there was kind of had to be this phase, I guess you could say of it feeling like taking a few steps back to move forward again in the phase of feeling like taking a few steps back. Um, what I learned, I think was the greatest lesson was that, um, not, not basing my value on my, the amount of work that I'm doing, not basing my value on, or my self-worth on the amount of money I make, um, the amount of clients I support, like not identifying, not tying my identity with that, mm-hmm. uh, if that makes sense. Yes. And so yeah. um, I have this experience, basically, um, I have a program called Star Power, 
And it's really about supporting uh, soul led leaders with shining their light and like being seen and blowing up and turning their gifts into gold and embodying their innate magnetism, which is your star power. It's like your most influential magnetic self. And so when I um, was first launching that, I was like initiated through that because a big part of what that was about is um, like knowing that you get to be yourself and that's more than enough. Mm. And when you're really embodied in who you are, then of course your content's going to be magnetic. You're not overthinking what you think you should say to blah, blah, blah. You know, when you're in your power, your star power, things are magnetic to you, whatever. And so through that experience, I had to literally let go more and more of like these old constructs that were still playing out. And I reached this um, point during um, one of the, the launches for that, where I was like, you know what? I literally do not care how many people sign up to this. I do not care. Like I am going to have fun, period, mm. point blank. Mm. I am I am going to just not care about the results and of course have an intention, but right. really, really um, make it about having fun and and all of that. And so when I did that, I felt like I freed myself and I really integrated the lesson even deeper because I didn't have like a million people sign up for it. I think I had like four people in the first round mm -hmm. and I was totally okay with that. And I was like, you know what? Fuck yeah. I'm going to serve them like just as if there was a hundred people in here and this is what I'm teaching them. So I'm going to be the example for that. And you know, one of them filled out her mastermind. Another one had like a six figure freaking month. Like another one filled her retreat. Like it was amazing. And, in you know, so I think that the, to like, I don't know, know if this is fully answering your question, but I hope it's, it's great. This is perfect. Keep going. But like, I, I think that sometimes we're also tested in different ways where we like in my example for that, I basically needed to face and other times from that, I basically needed to face things that I was afraid of happening, mm. like, you know, failed launches or whatever, like, and still be totally fucking good and say, you know what? Like, I'm still awesome. My work is still awesome. People get amazing results. This is amazing. And it's like, it's re it's, it's kind of like, we need to be there within ourselves and I wasn't fully there in myself in some ways. And I'm always working and growing and expanding too. But everything, like I said, is a reflection of like the the, the depth of love you have for yourself. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, like, and it might sound cliche and we might be like, well, what the fuck? Like, I do love myself. Like, how, what, what do I have to do? Like, but sometimes yeah. it's like, okay, you know, well, can I still know that I'm enough even if I don't have anyone sign up for my thing? Yeah. And I still think my work is amazing and valuable, even when da 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 da. Can yeah. I still um, think that this is good enough, even when if I'm not working on it twenty four seven? You know. And so, and but but to your specific thing, I learned that lesson, the whole productivity thing, a long time ago. I think that sometimes, I, I I actually used to deal with this thing where, I would be like can it really be that easy? Cause I've had really easy time. Like make, I made one post before and had like a $30,000 a week from a few, like from one post. And I remember feeling so convicted before that post, like, oh yeah, like I'm going to do this. This is going to be great. And when it happened, I was like, oh my gosh, like, is this okay? Can mm. it really be this easy? I felt guilty that it was uh -huh. easy. So I can kind of like, really yeah. I, I went into yeah. this like, oh, it, I should have, is this, is this a fluke? Like, you know, it was so, yeah. um, so I think that there's a lot to say about that too. And just reminding your, like finding evidence, I would say, like, because you know, that there's people out there that are millionaires, billionaires, whatever, that are not like, you know, working 24 seven. And then there's other people out there that are working three jobs never home and they're still barely getting by or working paycheck to, from paycheck. So that's kind of really irrelevant. It's not really what a lot of people think it is, right? Some mm -hmm. people are, you know, um, 
you don't know how money can come to you. I, and something that I like started getting into more is letting money flow to me in whatever way that it wants to, mm. in whatever way that feels exciting. And, you know, I love to make my pendants still because it feels nice for me to be in my art and I like to share them and, you know, um, getting creative with the types of things that I want to offer or share or whatever, or experiences I want to create and, and, or just like literally letting go and saying, you know what, money can come to me in whatever way it wants to. Mm-hmm. Um, Love it. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. That was so <laughs> valuable what you shared (laughs) thank you yeah and I would say just um like for you I like tune into how would you how like if it could be any way in the way of your absolute dreams like how would that look like how would that feel like if you could have your perfect day like would you start slow in the mornings and you know whatever that is um, I started asking myself, like, how, how do I want to live my life? Mm-hmm. First of all, and how can I, you know, create things around that? Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love that too. I feel like there's so many, I could keep talking to you for a long time. I, <laughs> I also just, this is total side note, but I just, your face is so sweet. And like, when you smile, I like, I can see that sweet little girl Aww. and, and I also can see like the empowered woman. It's really lovely. Like you have Aww, such a beautiful blend of like a youthful innocence and, and sweetness and also like the this, sage. Like, yeah. Ass. It's, it's, yeah, it's really lovely. You, you have a, a beautiful smile. Um, oh my gosh. What else? Embodied woman. What does that mean to you? What is what is being an embodied woman? Like, what is your definition of that? And when do you feel like you are your most embodied self? Mm. So I would say being an embodied woman is being like being embodied in what you teach, preach, believe in, like uh, keeping your word to yourself, uh, having integrity. Um, loving yourself radically and others and uh, being embodied is being embodied to me like how i view it is like i don't know i when i think of this i think of like my life and like my life behind the scenes and how i pour it into my business and how like aligned it is mm-hmm. and that to me feels embodied um and in the areas where it isn't sometimes is my cue of where I need to do a little bit more work or fine tuning, um, if that makes sense. Where I'm like, okay, this is a little bit mm, not super there yet. So what do we need to do or practice? Um, yeah. And awesome. being in my body, like feeling myself, like feeling really freaking good in who I am. like. Feeling really empowered is being embodied to me. Feeling really empowered and just amazing about myself and still loving myself in the moments where I feel like a hot mess. Yeah. And you had one other question of how does it feel in my life or something like that? Oh, I just think like when when you feel your most embodied. Oh, when do I feel most embodied? Okay, so when you said that, I always, I think immediately of these events that I do with my friends. Mm -hmm. So in the past year, I started hosting these really freaking fun events for my soul fam. I have a lot of friends in Austin and I wasn't always one to like bring people together and host big things. I usually kept it to my small circle, but over the last year I've expanded my circle and I've been hosting these events and each one has like a little theme. Like the first one was soul fam convergence. The second one was Stephanie's birthday extravaganza. The next one was (laughs) the soul fam cozy Christmas. And I'm doing like a a women's manifestation mixer. And like, I feel I, I can witness myself really embodied in who I am through the reflection of my people. Mm. Um, because like they'll come and then I see different sides of myself come out of like the playful hostess. Like I'll, I'll do my rap songs and perform for them. Like at some of oh, these, I love like, it. 
get the food ready, like get the vibes in my place, like that I get to experience an, myself from a, in a different dimension, if that makes sense, where yeah. I can see like, oh, damn, like I'm like really doing it. Like, this is <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love those moments where you're like, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. oh, Stephanie, thank you so much. So is there something that you're the most, I mean, you have so many offerings, I'm sure, but is there something that's like the most ex- juicy and exciting to you that you want to share about? Yeah, I'm actually streamlining a lot of my stuff this year and um, putting it all together in bigger experiences. Um, I would say I'm most excited about my star power program. Mm -hmm. Um, That one's all, like I said, it's about being seen, blowing up and turning your gifts into gold. There's a lot of people that I I work with that are afraid to fully be seen in their magic, with their gifts, with their channeling, with like whatever. There's always another layer, in my opinion, of like really being seen and, and owning your star power. So I would say that's something I'm most excited about. It's one of my main programs where there's a lot of other things in there that I've done in the past to support with embodying your star power, different programs. Um, And I'm also about to share soon uh, a new amazing mastermind experience that's just next level. But I would say that if anyone wants to know more about the things that I do, I I do little pop-up things sometimes. I have a lot of free content that they could just follow me on Instagram at it's Stephanie Sage um, or my website, spiritualbossbabe.com. Like you can, I mostly share everything on Instagram of like what's happening, what's coming up and all the things. And I also love connecting with people in the DMs. So if you're listening to this podcast, tag us all like I would love to hear like if it resonated and all that and you have your own podcast I have my own podcast which is actually going to be going through a rebrand too guys oh my god so yeah my podcast right now is called spiritual boss babe podcast um and you can find it on all the places awesome I love it I love it we are so grateful this was so beautiful this whole experience is like medicine thank you Mm -hmm. stephanie this was just the most i am i'm i can't even say what else can i say i'm just so grateful i feel so enlightened from this experience with you i can't Mm -hmm. wait to share it i feel honored to connect with you heart to heart um and so thank you yeah thank you both for having me i i i just so appreciate it and love being able to share with your people as well and so glad that you guys loved this and i had such a beautiful time yeah Yay. thank you thank you <laughs> you're amazing you're amazing you guys thank you thank you <laughs> stephanie thank you bye. so much bye we're bye. gonna wrap up and if you want to pop off okay. we're gonna keep going for a minute oh you guys are yeah cool, cool. yeah thank you well, that was amazing. She's amazing as we knew she would be, but in an unexpected way, like in yes. just in such a yes. dropped in, like grounded way. I was expecting her to be more etheric, which she is. Yeah. But she's also like super grounded and relatable and just like yes. heart yes. open and all of the things. What was your takeaway? What do you feel good about? I mean, obviously well, there's so many. Yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, like I wanted to cry throughout the entire conversation. Um, I felt really touched. Um, yeah, I think, you know, the, I think the biggest takeaway is just that we're like on this never ending journey yeah. and, yeah. and, um, also when she was talking about her program, star power yeah. and like how, people that she works with are, um, you know, like afraid to step into that next level of really being seen. Yeah. And I think that like, you know, I've been sharing a lot about my book lately and like, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm committed to it. I wrote it. It's happening. But like, I can feel this, like almost like panicked feeling Mm -hmm. of like the next layer of really being seen. Yeah. And it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And it's like, there's still that part of me 
that's, and it's like, you know, the experience that I had last night with losing all my edits, it's like, it's almost like, it feels like a test, like, mm-hmm. you know, cause, cause there's a part of me, like, I just want to give up. And like, when she was talking about, you know, those, those phases that we all go through, right. Yeah. You and I are both having our own unique experiences of like, what feels like somewhat of a regression, mm-hmm. but it's really just the next layer of our growth. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think. Just to, yeah, I think just to, to, to have an understanding that we're all, we're all like having that experience, you know, yeah. some days it feels really good and easy and some days it doesn't, you know? Yes. But what is so incredible is you keep, you keep showing up. We keep showing up mm-hmm. and the people who are listening if you're going through your dark night of the soul, as Amber has said in past interviews, yeah. you've, you've said this exact thing several times. Um, you're needed. You know, you matter, you're important, and um, your gifts are important. Yeah. So that was, my, that was my conversation with God last night. I was like, really? Like, I'm willing, I keep showing up. Like, I keep doing this. Like, I feel like it's important. Yeah. But sometimes it's really fucking hard, you know? Yeah. Sometimes it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I think this particular time of year, actually, <laughs> not to, like, make light of, of any of this, but I do think this particular time of year, it can be incredibly challenging uh, between Christmas, New Year's into February, Valentine's. This whole period mm-hmm. is incredibly challenging for a, like a majority of people. Um, and then for people who are listening that are highly sensitive, like Stephanie was saying, you mm-hmm. know, spiritual, open, open-hearted, you know, compassionate, empathetic, big feelers. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is that this particular season, is it because of the expectations that come with a new season, a new year, a new? Yes, that. And also just, it's cold, it's dark, it's windy, Mm -hmm. it's, it's harsh. I mean, depending on where you live, you, you're in it, you know, not as a harsh of an area as I am, but like, it's, I, mm. I, I mean, astrologically, I I'm sure there's stuff going on as well, but right. I, I just think like, you know, these holidays of Christmas and New Year's and Valentine's, I find that to be very, a very heightened time for people. It's not, yes. su- yes. it's not summer vacation time. It's not yes. let's, let's chill and, and hang out and go, you know, it's a, it's a heightened time. I think people, a lot of people get quite depressed, for example, during this time of year. I think there's, right. pro- there's probably a statistic, we could look it up, of, you know, that most <laughs> um, suicides happen during this time of year. Um, mm. and, and, and if you look uh, geologically- Like geogra- seasonal depression ge- type ge- stuff. Yes, too. yes. Geographically, like places like Alaska or Vermont or mm-hmm. like where I grew up is in Vermont, like places like that, there is a much higher suicide rate. Like it's just, there's, mm. a, yeah, seasonal. Yeah, seasonal depression. So yeah. uh, that's not to diminish what we're talking about. It's just to add to it by saying like, I think it's a challenging time of year. So what you're saying is as a highly sensitive empath who is really vulnerable to seasonal, uh, that it's good that I stay in Southern California because I'm very, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I think it's important for you to have sunshine and for all of us, I've got my, I've got my, um, light, (laughs) my sunshine light here because we have an ice storm right now. Yeah. Where I am, it's, um, it's, it's just, I, I don't feel, I can't go outside. 
Right. I haven't I haven't been able to walk outside comfortably. Oh god. Um yeah. and so I noticed for me not yeah. having sunshine, not walking, not getting outside and getting fresh air and walking and walking. Um yes. I just don't want to. I, yeah. I want to hibernate. And so yeah. I find it very challenging, you know, it's it's it it, it feels it feels um my body is like, you know, much <laughs> more. Got your boys, are, are those your boys fighting? Yeah, oh, <laughs> oh, well, they probably are. I mean, yesterday they got into horrible fights. Well, we should wrap up. Anyway, let's wrap up. Yeah. So we see your humanness. We right. understand there's um, challenging times. And I think one of my takeaways, just like Amber, you were saying is like, it's kind of like the bow being pulled back. They talk about this in Buddhism is like the bow being pulled back before um, mm. you launch the arrow, you know? And so it's, it is this like force of, of our soul being pulled mm. back before. And the bigger the mission, the bigger that, that kind of resistance and that pullback becomes. And so I think um, the bigger our missions are as women and, and men, the more um, resistance and dark night of the soul experiences um, that we, we can tend to have. And so, you know, it is proof when someone is going through it that they have a big equal equal to that challenge is is how is how big their mission is that was not very eloquent but that you get what i'm I saying i totally understand what you're saying and i find it to be very uh comforting oh good i think because when you are having the challenge it to imagine that the equivalent on the other side of it is also coming uh it's comforting because when good. you're in it it it's hard to like see beyond the, what you're experiencing in that moment. Yep. You know what I mean? Which yeah. it's just, that's the human, that's the human condition. That's being a human. Yeah. Um, we yeah. love you guys. We yes. appreciate you so much. We, I, and I think Amber love being able to do this. It's such a privilege to be able to be in your ear or have you hear us watch, watch what we're talking about with these amazing women. So thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. We love you.